Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This New York City baller was second team all city in 1976 and 77 out of William E. Grady High School. He went on to dominate at Kansas State University, where he was Big 8 Player of the Year in 1980 and Defensive Player of the Year in 1978, 79, and 80, which made him a consensus All-American and first-round draft pick to the Dallas Mavericks. Help me welcome four-time NBA All-Star, Rolando Blackman. Can't forget resident artist, Jamel Powell. Y'all yeah. ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. 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 You have you just have stepped into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets get the game about to start. <laughs> <laughs> How did they going? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, oh man. man, excellent, man, excellent, man. Good to see you again. <laughs> exactly. We got all that stuff taken care of this afternoon. I'm so happy we did too. So happy. We yeah, did. man. It's awesome. Yep. So to get things started on with the night, I got my guy drawing something nice for you, man. Oh, uh oh, okay. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Our resident artist, uh, Jamel Powell, he played for Coach Granby at Jackson. There you go. There you go. Just yeah. make, make, sure, make sure he got me hitting the shot, though, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your phone that way. Yeah, turn your phone that way. There you there go. You so go. We can there see. you go. Smooth, yeah. smooth, smooth. So, who introduced you to the game? Oh, my goodness. At the first introduction of the whole thing, was uh my uncle, my uncle Vernon took me to the took me took me to the park and uh I don't know I don't know what the heck I didn't know what the heck was going on that first day. The I the idea was that I was just looking around, understanding what's going on, seeing it what's what's happening. But then when I came back to the park three days later, that three days later over at Ditmas Park, there was this guy by the name of Ted Gustus. Ted was out there shooting around, playing, these kids were running around. And I had an opportunity, and he came over to me. He said, "Hey, yo, man, you want to play?" I was, I was, I was so excited, man, just to have somebody ask me if I wanted to play because I couldn't play worth, I couldn't play worth the doggone whatsoever. And Chad brought me around, and that's where the whole thing started, man. At the age of, at the age of really like 10, 11 years old, 10, 11 years old, I started to play this game called basketball. And uh, Ted, Ted took me through the paces from all the, from all the scrub courts. That I was playing on with all the guys like me, till till I got to, to the top of high school when I was uh, playing on court number one for Teddy. Yep, a lot of important things, man. Wow, wow. So where in Brooklyn did you grow up? Uh, matter of fact, I was right. I was right there at uh, Eastern Parkway. I was at Eastern Parkway 500, Eastern Parkway in Nostrand, where they had that theater. Where they had that theater at the corner. I was yeah, my God, Pat Burke. Exactly. We were just on that block today, me and exactly. Phil. Exactly. I was right up yeah. the block. I was right up in the middle of the block. It's 500 Eastern Parkway. That's when I. That's when I first got to. Uh, first got to New York and didn't know what the heck was going on. All I saw was all these bunch of cars. It was. It was. It was crazy. People walking up and down. I had just come from Panama. I didn't know what was happening. The people were speaking all this English around me. It was. It was. It was. It was a madhouse for for eight year old man. But I'm telling you, it was. Uh, it was something my grandmother wanted for me. And uh, God bless her soul, man. It took it took the path, and and thank her so much for, for having me come up to this country. Definitely, definitely, salute, Grandma, for sure. Definitely. So, was uh, Ted Gusty your first coach? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. When you talk about coaching the game of basketball and understanding the game, I was over there at six forty five, six forty five East Ninety Fourth Street. That's where we had moved to at that time to be able to get that stuff done. And I would walk over two blocks to Dibbs Park. And walking over to Dippers Park, that's when Ted pulled me around. 
And I'm telling you, man, we had to be there early in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, trying to learn this game, understand how to dribble, keep your head up. You know what I mean? Get, get to your finger, connect to your fingertips, moving back and forth, understanding the game. Don't do it so stiff like that. Make sure you got free flow, moving and everything too. Can you see the cutter? Move. You can't look down and dribble if you don't see the cutter. You got to – then how do you get your feet together, change positions? It was just – it was just a deluge of stuff that was teaching, but it was it was done with care, it was done with love, and it was done with mass operational skills, man, because he, he got you prepared to actually execute, which which helped me a great deal. So Teddy Teddy was the one teaching the game and teaching the spirit of how to play the game also, which was which is very important. Yeah, he, uh, he was on last night. He talked about how much he loved you guys and, and his passion for teaching uh, kids basketball. And he said, once he started to love the kids, coaching became easy. Well, he did everything for us. He was there all the time. He was taking us through. Like, we, 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 had, we had, didn't have, like me, didn't have a father in the house, but I had a father outside, and that was Ted. Ted, Ted was taking us through every piece of the puzzle. Sit up straight. Talk this and that and the other. Look somebody in the eye when you talk to him. Make sure you say, yes, sir, no, sir, no. Put this together. Have respect. Do you do your homework? Did you get... Every single piece of the puzzle, plus teaching the game and really giving us experiences also, too, because all those tournaments we, we, we went to play in, we didn't, we didn't have any money. Ted was selling coupons, getting books set up, this, doing this, going to the back of this, and getting, getting money from this person, that person. All I knew was I had a T-shirt that said Citywide on that bad boy, and I, and I was in a tournament. That's it. Teddy, Teddy took care of all of that and really – and really took us to where we needed to go, man. It, from young kids all the way through to when we left high school as young men. So it was, it, it's, it's really, when I tell you it's really special, it's a, like I tell people around here, it's a godsend. Without him, without him, you don't get the proper principles in order to move past high school and continue to develop and grow. Yeah, that, that's, that's very important. And uh, what we did uh, last night, we uh, honored Coach Gustus with a, we have an award in his name, right? It's called the Game Over Basketball Heads Award. And the first recipients of that award was Rob Phelps and Coach Ray Haskins. Excellent, Coach Haskins, too. Definitely so. Oh, my goodness. And Rob, my goodness, man. Rob came down to the Maverick, uh, Rob came down to the Maverick uh, 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 training camp and was, and was doing work, man. And that's, that's one of the things that, people don't understand is that at the end of the day, you have to be ready. And then Rob ran into the politics of too many players who got drafted, how much money, this and that and the other. He got, he got into the political side of the whole thing. And, but, but he could hoop. He came down there hooping them, playing, shooting, doing all that thing. That's why I tell kids all the time. You got to be ready. You got to be prepared because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, people making decisions. But the one number one thing is you got to be a hooper. Yes. First and foremost, you got to play. And that's, and that's what he did. Came down there and did work, man, for sure. All right, so I've been hearing this word hoop a lot, right? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we replacing the hoopa, right? Are we replacing ball of a hoopa? Like, I've been hearing this new, not saying it's new, but it's becoming a new thing to say about ball players, call them a hooper. Well, the thing, the thing about it, I started hearing it years, I started it years, years ago, man, when somebody said, damn, he could hoop. You know he what I mean? Hoop. He can yeah, hoop. Okay. But the idea of a hooper is that you're coming into any any place, anywhere, and you're laying your game down. You know what I mean? It's not any possibility that you're going to not come and show your wares, put yourself out there to go play, and to come and do work. That's the main factor. It's not anything to do with anything except for there's a ball out there, there's some of the opponents out there, and you and you come in to show what you're coming to do, period. That's, that's, the, 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 that's the thing, you know, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York is, is, so, is so wonderful, the things that I remember in the, in the toughness that it showed, the, uh, the ability to being able to now focus, because, because you had to focus in yes. order to play the game of basketball. You got people out there behind the fence cussing, going off, yelling and screaming for their people, yelling against you. Whatever the situation is, you have to be able to come with the wares to being able to do the job and to do it well. And that's, that was very, very important. New York... New York prepared me for that completely, to being able to be focused and be able to be a shot maker. Hit, hit the doggone shots. Don't be taking shots. Hit them. Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to get to that part as well. Uh, at that time when you was a young player and 
Coach Gustus took you under his wing. Who was the best player in your neighborhood at the time? Oh my goodness! I mean, when I when I was when, I mean when I was young when I was young like that when I was young like that all I kept hearing about all the time was uh, I kept hearing about about uh, I mean Bernard was Bernard was Bernard was was huge, big and playing the game. I mean, we had a whole bunch of whole bunch of guys playing the game, but the only person that I would that I can remember at that time was was uh, was uh, was um, was uh, Julius Irving. Playing the game, the doctor. The people would be checking, yeah. checking him out all the time. People would be checking out Earl the Pearl Monroe doing his spins and and step backs and putting this all together. The Celtics in New York were having some serious series, and of course, and of course, when you go out to L.A., when you had Jerry West and and uh, Wilt Chamberlain out there, you had a you had a whole lot of uh, different pieces of the puzzle. Chicago had some nice boys out there with Chet Walker, Butter Bean Love. They had they had a whole lot of people that would come down to being able to play. But at that time, the New York Knicks and Boston Celtics were in our area. And that's who we used to watch all the time to being able to see what's happening. And especially when you had the coolness of Col uh, Clyde Frazier walking around. I don't know. He must have spent half his money on his clothes because that's what I remember. Every you know, Everything Clyde wore with them hats, furs, all the shoes to match. All He was, he was, he was, he, he was a walking modeling show, walk, but he could play the game. And it was something that was special to us at that time too. And don't let me forget, don't let me forget Kareem too. My goodness, my goodness, working it in Milwaukee, working it him and Oscar. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so you were looking past the neighborhood. You was looking at the guys that you may be playing against one day. No, oh, the thing about it, I was just trying to learn, Glenn. I was just trying to learn and understand what this game was about. Ted Teddy was always talking about learn the whole game, understand the format of the game, who was cutting, who was going on. The reason I shoot the catch and shoot is because I saw I saw Dollar Bill Bradley grab the ball and he didn't dribble, he shot the ball. He just catch shoot it, catch shoot it. I saw I saw I saw uh, Clyde Frazier come down setting stuff up, being able to handle dribble, no no look passes, putting the ball up in the air. I saw uh, Havlin, I saw Havlicek come down and he was he was giving he was giving it to everybody, 28, wow. points, 28 points a game and he and he would move more. Move, move! Shot a one shot runners off the glass. I mean, it was it was watching a lot of people, a lot of people play. Even Dean, the Dream Manager, coming off the bench, putting yes. some smooth defense, putting that kind of stuff too. Ba Barrett, a uh, uh, Barnett was over there kicking, kicking with that left hand, kicking them legs out with the. It was it was just a lot of people to watch to being able to understand what Ted was talking about in watching the whole game. And of course, and of course, we all knew and understood about about Jerry West and. And the players that could shoot the ball, Pistol Pete, Pistol Pete was out there doing his thing, doing his thing also. So it was a variety of players, and of course, I mean Julius was Julius was the king at, at that time too, man. The, nobody nobody messed around with the doctor. Yeah, uh, Coach and I last night were talking about uh, the best teams that played in the NBA, like the best five, right? And we wound up having the same team, right? So I'm going to tell you what my team was. And my team is the same team Coach Gustus had. Mm -hmm. We had Kareem at the center. Got it. Connie Hawkins at the four. Okay. Bernard at the three. You at the two. And Tiny at the one. Oh, you're talking about New York. You're talking about New York. Players. We just talking about New York. Oh, that's definitely. it. I mean, I mean, this is a New York based podcast, oh, no, so we no, just I mean, I mean, about I, New York. I, I was, I was, I was deeply, I was deeply appreciative of all of that kind of stuff too, because at the end of the day, when you talk about people putting the ball in the hole, having the opportunity to be seriously consistent and really play the game at, at the highest level, then when I saw everybody there, we can put up an argument if you want, but 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 let's get to it. Let's now, listen. listen. I'm, I'm just saying it's not a, it's not an issue because you have that's right. You, it's not a, it's not an issue because when you talk about catching and shooting, putting the ball up, or taking you one on one too. So e either way, I didn't need the screen either. So the the main factor was just to being able to play the game, make the passes. I could play the one and the two. So the important factor was to being able to get the game done and get the game done right and shoot the ball at a high level. And which which is which is what I was able to do. Which was I'm very very proud of that. You was a two-way player, bro. Let's let's mm -hmm. let's not even be modest. You won Defensive Player of the Year, 
1978, 79, 80. This is not by coincidence. And I pride myself on playing defense as well. So when you're a two-way player like that, listen, sky's the limit. This is why you are the greatest, you know, two guard that come out of New York City. I played hard, and the main thing about it, I had good teaching. I had good people teaching me all the way around. Even even when I even when I even when I played outside of uh, Teddy, I, I played for Brooklyn USA with the great Lester Roberts. So when when, when when in in those kind of things, I was learning each and every time, looking at seeing exactly what's happening, going up to different places, playing with Brooklyn USA, and really having an opportunity to play against with Super Bowl players from all over from all over the place, going up to Baltimore, going up to Boston going up to all the different kinds of places, Georgia, playing against the players, but using the principles that I learned from Ted and all the fellas that were on the team to being able to get things together. I learned a lot, man, but the main factor was that it was, wasn't just only skills. It was just the applied science of being tough-minded and also working within a team. If you got nine, ten people that can work together, then you have a chance of winning on a consistent level. And that always stayed in my mind even when I left high school and got to Kansas State University. Wow. Did, did you play in the Brevoort Sports Foundation? No, matter of fact, matter of fact, I played a couple games in Brevoort, but I didn't play a whole, I didn't play a whole bunch of games in Brevoort. I was, I was down there playing citywide every year, all the, all the time. I played on West 4th two times down there, and that's about it. That's about it. I was always in the park working on my game, left hand, right hand, speed, stop, shoot go to the basket. And you know how it is in New York when the wind is blowing, you know what I mean? Running around all over the place. I was still, I was still busting jumpers with the wind blowing. So with that right. situation is, is just to being able to be a player, but taking the coaching that I had from a lot of great people, man. And, uh, uh, New York, the city, the city really helped me, man, because you really had to have the right, the right kind of attitude because that transformed me from being a, a shy, quiet guy to still being quiet, but being, but being a, but being a monster inside, I can, I can, I can bring that up even today, because it's required, in order to be at the top of the food chain, because people, come, you know what I'm saying? It's required. That's right. So I understand where to go, where, where, when I need it, and that's the important factor. But New York taught me that, though. New York taught mm. me that all the toughness you needed, the future, the focus that you needed. I think I told you a story about that last time, man. Is that? Is that what it, what it teaches you is that after all the work that you do, all the 440s, the 220s, all the 100-yard dashes, all the suicides, all the shooting, all the stuff that goes down with all of that, is that at the end of the day, man, you've got to be able to command your skills and put them to work when it's needed. Now! It's needed now. There's four minutes to go. You're down six. You know you're going to get a few more possessions. You've got to be able to come with your game. What is it that you control? If you don't control it and you don't own it, then you can't command it when you need it. That's the important. Pe people need to know that and understand that. And Brooklyn just taught me how to be tough and tough-minded when, when, when everything got hard. And that was, a, that was a great thing when I went to college and especially my first years in the pros also. Uh, um, we're going to talk a little bit because uh, I got my guy, uh, one of my guys down with basketball heads, Pat Alphonse, Grady Great. Her, right. Pat, well, he, is he? Well, first of all, you gotta tell me where Pat is, cause, cause Pat is in Brooklyn. Pat, yeah, not, oh, oh, yeah, here in Brooklyn. Here in Brooklyn. Oh, 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 oh. I, I thought he might have been in L.A. So, man, he might be sipping on something in L.A. So, okay, okay, Pat, you back in Brooklyn? Okay. <laughs> My L.A. man, Pat boy. Yeah. Pat, yeah. How, how was it in Grady in the seventies? Well, I mean, for for me, it was just a, all a basic learning experience, man. Being able to come up. Had a, had a coach by the name of Fred Moskowitz who was teaching the basic same things that coach, that coach was teaching. I would use that stuff on the street, different things, and come up to, to uh, high school with Fred Moskowitz at Grady High School and learning the game. I, I played the, the center position, but I broke the press. I got the one. I got the ball in the middle, broke through the press, throw it weak side, break the, break the guard down, come back, and put that together. But that's because Teddy Gustus had me ready to play any position, even though I played the five, wow. I played the five in high school. So in playing wow. the five, I was dribbling, I was passing, I was shooting, I was doing all kinds of stuff. And I can remember, I can remember those Jefferson teams, man, with, uh, with, uh, I can remember those Jefferson teams with uh, Sig Green on it. Sig Green, right, on right, it and yes. Playing, and playing with Erasmus, against Erasmus, and Riley, Clarita, and all those guys over there too. So it was, it was crazy, man. But, but my time was Skip Jackson and, 
Wayman McCoy and all those kind of all those kind of players that would be Artie Green. Everybody, right, right, everybody, yeah. Everybody's still scared of Artie Green. <laughs> you hear you hear Taft coming, but but you, you all, all y'all know that Taft had three bad boys on the squad. So you know it wasn't just Artie, but it was it was just it was just a lot of fun, man. Earl Fuller, you know, oh no, the Nesbit, Nesbit, and 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 the, all the all the fellow Ron Chisholm, man, could Ron shoot the ball? You know, I mean, just just watching people play in the city inspired you all the time. It inspired you because, I, like, I, I was talking to my man. I think y'all know who he is. I'm talking to Dave Britton today. I was talking to okay. Dave. I was talking to Britton, and David said to me, "You know what? If everybody in New York stays and goes to school in New York, they they, they would have all the powers right around the Eastern Conference. That even if even if you even if you went to LIC, even if you went to Brooklyn College." You get five guys to go to Brooklyn College. Brooklyn College will be up there top five. So it's just a matter of the city breeds the type of players that can now hold longevity as long as you can command the skill. Because at a, at a pro level, you've got to be able to command the skill and count on it when you need it. And that's what's the most important about it. Not just playing. You've got to command what you own and show it when you need it. Wow. My God, Phil, just... Uh... Text me a question. I got you, Phil. I just wrote it down. So I'm looking at some of the guys who uh, came out during your year. Um, who we at? It was uh, Al King. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. We played them. We played Bill them. Bill Kidd from mm -hmm. Taft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Kenny Page from McKee. Listen, okay. I just did a special on uh, hey. Staten Island, and I didn't realize... I have never heard of uh, Kenny Page until oh, yeah. I'm doing my research on Staten Island. Mm -hmm. Right? I was down there, Kenny my Page. Mm -hmm. Told Kenny me, Page. yo, look up Kenny Page. Mm -hmm. I think Al Eagle told me to do that. Who was the left hand kid? Was that Kenny Page? Left handed? Left handed? Left handed? Ken I think it was, uh, went to New Mexico. But uh, No, Kenny, Kenny went to uh, Ohio State. Ohio State, okay. There's another kid. Right? You yeah, have Artie Green. Artie, yeah. Who was yep. on the second team? You know, I'm looking at a lot of these guys, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, mm -hmm. yeah, these guys' names is big, but your name reigns supreme. But they, and it's not to knock any of those guys, no, right? No, no, but it's just, it's just also, it's just also my own development, though. I was, I was coming up throughout the time, learning from Ted, learning the opportunity to apply myself, and being able to know how to practice to get better. Left hand, right hand, shooting, making sure that I was in condition to go hard for 40 minutes, not five minutes, go hard for 40. And that way your conditioning is there to being able to apply the skills that you need and to go at the intensity needed to be the best. That's, that's the key. You can play good the first five minutes, six minutes, but you got to play a full game. You got to whoop the starter. You got to whoop the guy coming off the bench because you whoop the starter. And you got to whoop the third guy coming off just to beat you up. He ain't coming off to play no basketball. He's coming off to take you out of your game, and you got to take care of him too. And it's important to being able to keep getting better, mentally stronger, applying the skills. But you got to be verbal because you got to talk to your teammates also. We're not bowling and we're not playing golf. You got to <laughs> you got to communicate with your boys. You see something, you got to talk to them about it, and you got to be right. and you got to be and you got to be accountable about it. When somebody says, man, you're supposed to be there on the back door to be able to take care of that. You can't be mad because you missed it last time and start arguing with them. You got you to step up quickly during the timeout. You got to be able to be mature, accountability. Every time you go to a higher level, they're not going to take any excuses. And they're not going to keep taking bad body language. And they're not going to keep taking your, 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 your inability to be accountable for what is, what's needed. At the highest level, everybody is a bad boy. So you got to be able to come with it or else you'll be down and then Fact. you'll be losing. So that's the, that's the whole situation as far as that's concerned. You got to be more than just tough. You got to be tough mentally and be able to bring your skills through the gruel, through the gruel, the hardship of a game. And day after day, you got to be able to bring that with you at a high level. Nobody should be kicking you in your butt to work hard. You should bring that normally and then compile upon it the skills you need to be in that game. Brother, the, the intensity and, and, and how you speak, I was just telling everyone, I know why 
he played at the top of the food chain. I know why he was a four-time All-Star, just in the way you speak. Now, where did this, this confident king come from? It the just confidence came, king, baby. It just came from learning, though. The thing, thing about it, I was, I, was shy, I was shy and quiet also in New York. See what I mean? You have, it's, it just came from understanding the requirements. What you need, just like all these AAU coaches you have, which are fantastic. They're doing a wonderful job. I'm, I'm happy that young men have these guys in their lives because it's very important. But they must know and understand that you have to add the added value of being able to teach them not only the spirit in which they need to live, the morality in which they need to live, the accountability that's necessary to be successful, but the idea and the opportunity to understand, like Bruce Lee said, the proper emotional content to get on out there. Guys can play the game, but you have to have a certain intensity, man, to bring it. Because if you ain't bringing it, I'm taking it. That's the important thing to understand. Listen to everybody, though, because, listen, I want to make sure we understand each other. Because when you stand up against, when you go up against and you shake up and you see Michael Jordan you're playing against, when you stand up there, you see it's Reggie Miller. When you look out there, you see Mitch Richmond. When you look out there, you see Clyde Drexler. This ain't no time to be fooling around. You have to have your act together, and you have to know exactly that you're going to be inside of a war. You're not scared of them. They're not scared of you. Now it's, now it's who has command of their game as well as the communication skills to make changes with their teammates. you got to be able to be accountable for all those things, and you got to know what's happening. But the confidence comes from understanding, understanding your game. Understanding to know that I'm not hot, baby. I'm not hot. I'm just going to hit. I'm open. I'm going to hit. I'm not hot. I'm going to do this tomorrow, too. You see what I'm saying? It's not, oh, he's on a good streak. I'm not on no good streak. I'm on, I'm on the streak because I can see the rim. The relationship is between me and the rim. Once I can see the rim, you have to block the shot. If you block it, cool. But if the relationship is with me and the rim, baby, I'm going to do what I did my whole NBA career. I'm going to shoot over 50%, baby. I'm going to let you have it. That's wow. That's what I mean. It's, it's important. But, that, but you grow to that, though, because it's required if you're going to be at the top tier. Uh, Coach asked me to uh, ask you about Rigo Hill. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, Rigo, Rigo. Man, Rigo, see, 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 Rigo, again, again, this is one of those things that Rigo, Rigo was actually, Rigo, I, I, would, I, would, I would suffice to say that, that when you try to fight, Rigo was like, like the – almost the best player on our team at uh, Kansas State University. I mean, not Kansas State, at, at Grady High School. At Grady, yes. At Grady High School. He was, he was, he could dribble, he could pass, he could shoot, he could dime. And when I say dribble, I mean, I mean that, 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 that dribble that cannot be guarded, that can't, you can't stay in front of him. You can't stay in front of him. But because he didn't have the proper, the proper coaching and understanding of his game, to incorporate it at the level in which he could play. That's why I say systemized situations are all good, all fine. Coaches have to know and learn and understand what their players can do. I know your system is nice and all that kind of stuff, and you, you do all this, but you got you to gotta change for your player. If your player is a fast runner and acting, then get him out in the open. Get him out one-on-one. -on -one. When, he's, when, he's, when the ball is coming down, give it to him. See if he can beat that first player. Let him go. Clear the side sometimes, but, but do things that help him. Rigo could go one-on-one, -on -one, go to the basket, shoot. If we had had those kinds of situations with Rigo, we would have been a better basketball team as far as all that's concerned also, too, because he's a major college player, but did not get the prep push and put in position to be the best that he could be. But Rigo could ball, period, period. Yeah. We, we had uh, a guy on my team, uh, Bernard Mitchell, uh, he was our leading scorer, led us to the city championship at Lincoln, and he didn't get the help and a push he needed, right? Because he could have played major D1 basketball mm -hmm. and even made it to the NBA mm -hmm. if he just had that push, mm -hmm. right? But we always talk about it. He's a great professional, and he does well with his family and his kids, so it all still worked out. Um, who was your toughest competition in high school? Well, I mean, I mean, in high school, it was always it was always Jefferson. You know, Jeff Jeff was always tough. Erasmus was always tough. 
that kind of a situation was those those guys that we would play with all the time as far as that's concerned. And of course, and of course, uh, I mean, we beat Albert in about 48, but I didn't want to mention that, but okay. But I didn't want to mention that, but, but okay. Ooh, hold on. The, the great, uh, when, he, when he was like Kenny Anderson in New York City at that time. Our team, our team played against uh, Albert at Fort Hamilton and we, and we, and we, and we went up there and rocked them because, uh, because we had a better team. We had a better overall overall team okay. sort of okay. had a better overall team he was he was the only one there and some yeah some other guys and we had we had me Rigo we had all kind of people that could that could hoop so uh it was it was it was very very tough for them at that time but 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 Al but Al by himself Al could play man Al could play as far as all that's concerned but it was it was definitely the uh the, the teams over at uh, uh Jeff um uh, Jefferson and um yeah. and over at Erasmus over at Erasmus also too I played against Eric Marbury a few times, also too, but I think I don't. Yeah, I, 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 I'm waiting for you to talk about Lincoln because we like right around the corner. Yeah, like, but there was no rivalry then. Yeah, but I can't. But I can't talk. I can't talk about teams that always whooped our tail, though. I can't do that. I can't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me, let me, let me, let me get the, let me get the, let me get the lashes. Let me get the lashes <laughs> and see if, and see. Hey, let me see if the scars. Sorry, Pat. Let Yo, Pat, my bad. <laughs> let me see. <laughs> let me see if the scars are still there because. Uh, even with Eric and all the rest of them, they had nice teams, man. Nice, strong teams. I mean, I mean, guys could play seven and eight, nine deep. Seven and eight, nine deep. Guys are on the bench, clamoring, clamoring to get in the games to show their show what they could do. So Lincoln was always a, a, a fantastic, fantastic teams in that kind of a way. During my time with Fred Moskowitz, he, with Eric down there, it was uh, it was it was it was just a crazy time. It was just a crazy time with that super super team. Definitely so. Wow. Well, that's crazy, right? Because you know, you, you guys didn't really have a really good team. You made second team all city, but you still landed and played in the big eight. That doesn't happen today. Yeah, because a you, kid doesn't make second team all city in New York City and the big eight school is coming to get him. The thing about it is though that you continue to grow though though. The, the the idea the idea for kids and everything too is to have coaches and people around them to keep them growing though don't you see because you get so many accolades and you get so many pats on the back and you get so much going on for you that you that you stop and thinking that you've made you've made it somewhere yes you've made it through the first stage of high school as one of the best and you've you've gotten some accolades for it but you've got to continue to grow that summer. That summer and all that kind of stuff, Teddy had me running like a running. I was running like crazy, shooting the ball, and, and even trying to play at a faster pace and a stronger pace, so that I had so so that I had that in my mind that when I got to college and I got to the practice court, I was I was working my tail off, and I had a great player there. Which lucky for me, I had a great player there by the name of Mike Evans, and, yes. my, and Mike Evans was there. Chucky Williams. Had just left it with the year before and got drafted by Cleveland. Mike Evans was there, and Mike, as a senior, was able to show me and show me how and how fast things are because he could have a forty-four inch vertical. He gets up in the air, he get up in the air, and he could shoot. So by the time half the year came, coach would put me on Mike. So I had to guard him, run with him, guard him, that kind of stuff. So it was it was so intense. That I was just getting ready for practice, like yo, let me let me go get this guy because he's a he's a two time All American. I gotta go get him. And by the time the year started to play, it's like okay, Rose started to show his wares at the end of the season. Coming down, it's like oh oh, this kid is stopping even the great Mike. So by the time Mike left for the pros, I came back the next year. I was ready. I was so I was so quick laterally, get up in the air, could play, could understand defense. So, so I mean, I mean that's the reason why I had the chance to be three times. I mean, the conference defensive player of the year three straight years in a row. You know what I mean? Which was uh, which was big time. Who who was this? But before you got there, who was the school that was recruiting you? Because what I, you know, and you explained what what I was uh, asking very well. But what I'm saying is, what you did in ninth in the seventies won't happen today. That's what I'm saying. And it's such an accomplishment, right? Who are some of the other schools that was recruiting you? Well, the thing, the schools that I, the schools that were recruiting me from were from all over. By the time I was a senior, I was, I was on my way to being all city in New York. So now, 
the important thing that I was recruited from from schools in LA to New York to all over the place. I went to my first recruiting piece was I went to Syracuse. I took my recruiting trip to Syracuse where Rick Patino was there being a recruiter and telling me all kind of stuff. My coach and I looked at the roster and saw all these sophomores and all these freshmen. And he asked me, look at this roster. When are you going to play? I looked at the roster right. and said, you know what? I can't come to school here. Then after that, there were two Brooklyn coaches that went over to Centenary College, Robert Parrish and all this stuff, independent schedule, all that stuff. I went there. And I said, no, nah, that might be something good. But that it wasn't a good feel. Then I went over to Marquette with Al McGuire. I went over to Marquette and got mm. a chance to be there, which was sweet. Al was wooing and talking and this and that in New York and Brooklyn. And we love you and this and that and the other. But I got a, I got a great break because one of the administrators came over to me and whispered in my ear, said, Al might be, I, Al might be leaving. Al might be wow. leaving. Oh, once again, Glenn, once again, man, you want a, break. A, a break, I got a break, I got a break. So I didn't, so I didn't sign there. And right after the recruiting, so he left, he booked, he booked, he left. Was he Sam worth it? Was Sam worth it in at the time? I don't think so. I think, uh, I think, uh, I think, uh, I, think uh, I think Butch Lee and them had already left too. Uh, okay. Ellis, okay. Bo, Bo Ellis and Butch was over there with their smooth, smooth uniforms that came out. They had the only yes, uniform yes. that was outside. Amazing. I love yes. that. You know what I mean? Yes. I love that too. That was a selling point. But I didn't go there. Then I went to Kansas State University. And in that visit, I, I knew and understood exactly what was happening with that stuff when I went over there, too, because that coach, Jack Hartman, don't forget, he's the one who coached Walt Frazier at Southern Illinois. He was Walt Frazier's coach. Mm. He, see what I'm saying? So I knew, like, he coached Walt Frazier? The, the New that York connection, Woods, That childhood that connection like, now. That connection there, like, oh, my God. And now he, he just left, Chucky Williams just left first round with Cleveland, and he's coaching another All-American. He can help me. He can help me develop. So I, I came back, told my coach, and that's it. That was the last visit. I didn't, I didn't take any more visit outs to UCLA or Arizona State or going somewhere else. I didn't do any more. I stopped right then, signed, and concentrated on going to Kansas State University, which, again, was a great choice, and it helped me to go to a place that wanted me and was going to give me an opportunity to play right away. No fooling around. Sometimes kids need an opportunity to play, to play, but not to just jump out into any starting situation. A lot of these kids get too much hype, 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 and the coaches and the people right next to them go along with it. Tell the kid the truth and tell him because once you, once you, get, to a, once you get to a college scene, there's a lot of other players there, a lot of scholarship people the coach is going to play the person that can acquiesce the best so he can win. You're, you're inside of a group now that winning is first. All that other stuff that you heard about is, is not that you got to help me win to play. So with that, that's where your career starts right there because it gets even meaner and nastier when you get to the pros. It's even meaner. Nobody hugging you. Ain't nobody hmm. kissing you. Ain't nobody talking about your moms. Ain't nobody asking you what they're telling you. Hey, Glenn, we paying you on the 1st and the 15th, right? Do your damn job. Do your job. Your job is to score or to do this, do that, do that. Do it. And, that's, and, and now if, you, if you're if a 17-year-old kid hearing all of that, that's, that's tough sometimes. You can't, you can't handle it. That's why, that's why I don't mind when a kid goes to school for a couple of years, man. Go to... Go to school and get developed for a couple of years. Get the, get the things that you need to become a man. We need men, not boys. Men. Men want to play with other people who are going to help them to win. All right? All that you coming in trying to learn and all this stuff. and all that, That's cool for college. When you come to the pros, people want people to play that's going to help them to win. So don't think that it's no cakewalking. They're going to try to do – No. After you don't make it this year, don't forget, there's a whole bunch of people coming out next year. And there's a whole mm. bunch of people in Europe. Oh, my goodness. And it's oh, a revolving door. It's a revolving door, dude. So if you're not ready to do what you do, stay in school. What you're doing coming out and you're trying to, no, stay in school. Get your education. Understand a lot more about what's needed, what's necessary. Get your game on. Get control and command. And then come out and come out and show them what you can do and come out and take, not come out and be on the other side. You put yourself at a disadvantage 
when you come come to this league too young. You come too young, it's a problem for you, man. This is this is the this is the adult grind, baby. This ain't got nothing to do with you being a kid, and ain't nobody asking you too many questions about anything. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna you're gonna be shiny coming off. They're gonna send you to some other league, whatever. And some kid out of Spain is gonna look good, or somebody yeah. gonna have a fantastic year out of UCLA or Georgia. They got this hot kid coming out of Georgia, and you know what? You're cut. He has the spot next year. So don't play games. This is this is the pros now. This is the pros. It's not. Don't fool around. Be ready. Be ready to to, to show your wares. Wow. <clears throat> so you winning Big Eight Player of the Year, and also. Defensive player of the year three years in a row. Did you realize I'm going to the NBA, or was it a game that you played to let you know that I you knew, was ready for the NBA? I knew as a senior I was ready. I was ready as I was knew as a senior because the year before, the year before I had uh, gone down to Rupp Arena and uh, and tried out for the 1980 Olympic basketball team. So I was down there with 78 other top players from all over the country and all that kinds of stuff. And everybody was there. And uh, we played down at Rupp Arena. And it was two weeks of, it was two weeks of light, of light that booty on fire. That's what, that's what it was. Grab, grab your, grab your blowtorch and see if you can make them, make them hop. That's the main factor. Just the kicking, you kicking tail. It's all over the place. And with that, Glenn, I'm, I knew during that second week that, that I was going to be on the team because I was whooping everybody's tail when I was there, just me and Isaiah, Mark Aguirre, Sam Bowie, and people give Sam Bowie a bad name now because he broke his foot, but you, there, there are reasons why he went ahead of Jordan, people. Yo. You just don't understand what kind of player that was. And a guy by the name of Michael Brooks out of LaSalle, man, we, I mean, made the, made the basketball team with, with all, kinds of, all kinds of players, Darnell Valentine, all those things. I went down that morning two weeks later, I went down that morning and expected to see my name. I looked and I saw Kansas State University, Rolando Black. When I went right to breakfast, I said, "Cool, cool, cool." I just went. I went right to breakfast. How did I miss that? And it's crazy because I saw a picture of you in the uniform. I was on the right? Olympic. I was on the Olympic and, team. Oh yeah, I made right. The and I team. scrolled past, mm -hmm. and and that's when I was. I got the uh, All Star pick. Mm -hmm. Wow. But this is a great segue to my next question. You down at the Olympic trials. All these ball players are there. Top notch division one players. Guys that's gonna go the first round. Guys that are you know, thinking oh, yeah. about being oh, yeah. legends in the NBA. Oh yeah. Who ass did you bust? No, no, no. I all need to them, know. All of them, Charles Bradley, Sleepy Floyd, Al Wood, all all of them, all the guys, all the guys that were down there playing the game, it was it wasn't it was it was something that at first the first day that I was going down there, you 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 a little you a little bit you a little bit conscious of all the best players of meeting at one time, and you're conscious of it. And I talked to my coach about it, and he said, "Son, just like in that country voice, he said, son, what are you worried about? You're one of the best in the country. Just go do what you do every day." Bam! I was, I was like, boom! Go do what you do every day oh my goodness what do i do every day I, pu I put i put i put it on every every day is what is what basketball was all about and putting all that together and everything so i went on that court and over the two weeks man i'm telling you i knew by the second week that i was on the team saw my name on there and then we after we made the 12 we then we went to colorado to see who was going to start and that was something special where we were in Colorado Springs, Colorado, trying to kill each other to see who was wow. going to be the star. And it ended up being the starting shooting guard on our on our on our, on our national basketball team. Straight up from Panama. You know what I mean? Straight out of Panama, eight year old coming out of Panama, coming to the United States and being the starting shooting guard on our Olympic basketball team. You know what I mean? I still I'm still mad at I'm still mad at uh, Jimmy Carter for for, for, for taking us out of the Olympics and the uh, political side, the Russians are in Afghanistan. So let's show them by 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 not letting the Olympic team go to play. So you know they used us for for for, for political purposes as far as that's concerned. But uh, I was a I was a starter on our basketball on our Olympic basketball wow. our, our national team. But believe me, Glenn, when I see the national thing all the time, that stuff that stuff gives me great pain, man. It gives me great pleasure. 
and it gives me great pain every time I see that Olympic stuff and, and I see the people walking with the flag and representing your country and they're on the track and they're saying, okay, Uruguay, United States, Germany, and they show the teams. I, I, I know, know that I hurt like crazy. I, it's, still, it's still painful today. 2020 wow. is still painful today to, to have that kind of thing taken away. Can you imagine coming from Panama City, Panama, and going all the way throughout and making your national team your national team. So anyway, it was it was just crazy, but it was special also too to be uh to, to be on that basketball team and to and to show and prove your wares. Definitely. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what's the difference between college and the NBA? The main thing, the main the, the main thing is your is your mental your mental and physical structure. You've got to be able to you gotta be able to, as I would say, take take the truth. Take the truth and be accountable for the truth. But right away there has to be a different level of maturity and understanding of, of what you need to do and how you apply yourself. When somebody says, hey, Glenn, man, get back, Glenn. What's what you doing? You, you know you didn't get back. You can't come back at me because I yelled at you. You, you the one didn't get back. So just, so just to squat, squash things, just say, Ro, I got it. I'm going to get you. Get it. Boom. Now I can go on to other things. But if you say something different, Glenn, I'm going to have to argue with you. <laughs> you see now we're gonna have to argue because you did not get back you did cause the other guy to get a foul you did cause them to get two more points you understand now we're gonna have to argue and fight and that's gonna be a problem be accountable for what you did so that we could squash it so we can move forward there's a different level mm. of strength and mentality with that and also when you get to the pros man the top the top players have control of their game so you don't fool around and let people open and all that kind of stuff. You don't like fool around and this guy might miss. I hope he 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 might he, he might not miss. You you fool around. You be you have to be careful. That dude, that dude is a pro. You can't that dude is a top line pro. That means he's coming at you. So the idea is that the, he has control of his game and has lifted his game where he can call on it, command it, and here it comes. It it comes. It's it's right there because he's controlling it. He's controlling it because of all the hard work and the mental focus that it takes to being able to play the game. It's every minute of the game. It's 24 seconds of 48, 48 minute game with 24 second intervals. You got to be ready to you got to be ready to ball, man. You got to be mm -hmm. ready to ball. So it's a it's a difference in maturity and the execution, the level of execution of your skill. Wow. Um, one. I forgot the person who asked, uh, wanted to know, one of the listeners wanted to know about your battles with Walter Davis. Woo! Yeah, Walt, Walt, Walt was a guy that I, 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 really, I really enjoyed playing against Walt because uh, it, it was almost some of the same style as far as that's concerned, catching and shooting, coming off the screen. You got to get to him by half court because you can't let him run up on you, all that kind of stuff because he can shoot the jumper. He had a couple moves, spin moves, and, and once he got the lock position, it was it was hell to get up to, to get out of his way to uh to stop the shot. So for me, it was a lot of fun to play against him because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I I, I won I won a whole bunch more of those battles as far as that's concerned. And he was a guy I respected a great deal also too because he was also he was also a fierce fierce gentleman on the court. He was fierce. He was fierce and played. But he was also a gentleman on the court, as far as that's concerned. Now, his buddy Ricky Sobers, who elbowed you in the face, hit you in the stuff, grabbed your jersey, hit you in the nuts. He was Ricky Sobers was nasty and dirty. But, but, but you understood exactly who you were going up against and what you had to do in order to impl implement your game. But I love playing against Walt. And I love playing in Phoenix also, too. It was always warm. It was always nice. The rims was always smooth. It was always good. That, that's one of my favorite places to play was in our Phoenix. Well, another guy I know you gave the business to, and he said it out of his own mouth, was Michael Jordan. Shoot, well, my, my, listen, though, my, Mike, Mike, uh, Michael had you, Michael had you twisting the knots if you don't fool, if you fool around with that kind of stuff, too, because the, his greatness, his greatness is, is far and a cut above. He had, he had the physicality. He had the skills. He had the also the energy, power. He he was a power and strength like a like a, almost like a little power forward in how strong he was and that kind of stuff. But the the thing with Mike is that the only thing you can do 
And this is not no looking at you, you coaches talking about writing stuff on a board and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. You're not doing none of that. And all that stuff you wrote, look at the career. It don't work. It didn't work. So you understand that don't work. And I'm telling you that, and you already know it. Don't be mad at me because you're the one wrote on the board and you know it didn't work. The important thing is... <laughs> Tell him, bro. Tell him, bro. <laughs> the, important thing, the important thing about Mike, man, is that you have to have offensive skills. And the only way you have a chance is to go at him. You have to go at him. I used to go at him, and so did Reggie Miller. So did Mitch Richmond. Those guys that you have a chance to... You have to, you have to give him a chance to foul you and to, and, to, and, to, and to know and respect the value of what's going on. But that's the only chance you have is to be able to use your skills also to put points on the board to being able to get those things done. And don't forget, if you're out in the open and you find yourself alone, don't have no pride. Just yell out loud, help! 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 That's, what, that's, how you, that's how you do that. That's how you do that. Don't be saying stuff like, I got him. I don't need no help. I don't. Nope. Yell for the next man next to you. Come over here and get the ball out of this guy's hands because he was that special, special, special player that could, that could play the game at, at the highest level and, at, and the cut was above everybody else. So you had to use your skills to go up against him to make him play some defense. And that's when you... That's when I used to have, be able to have a chance to get it. Well, I also was reading that you was a very important person to have on a team and also to have in the locker room because you exemplify what a professional should be. It's just all the things I learned from my mom and all the things that I learned from Teddy. That's the, that's the basic part of the whole thing, too. A guy like Ted, a guy like Ted uh, was a lifesaver because I keep telling people all the time, he not only helped me with the, not only the game, but he helped a lot of other kids also, too. All of us that were in the program, guys went on to be real estate agents, bankers, teachers, different situations that they put themselves. They went on to be coaches also. But he gave us the situation and understood that it's a team game, the camaraderie, the respect, the value, the integrity that's necessary in order to carry on from game to game to game. You're playing with 12 people plus a coaching staff, so you've got to come together under some kind of moral rule. There has to be a morality about what you're trying to get accomplished and trying to do that for the next man. I care mm -hmm. for you. You care for me. And we go on as brothers out there on the court to being able to beat the opponent and try to get that done. And that's what was important to me. And Teddy, Teddy was the one that laid that down for all of us to see day after day in his own life and how he carried himself on the basketball court and the things he taught us. So it was, it was, it was him who gave us the path and showed us the way. Wow. Well, one of the questions that Phil Hayes wanted to ask was, what was Pat Valley thinking oh. when <laughs> he <laughs> left John Stark in Yo. the game and had <laughs> you on the bench, Holy the gunner shit. from Brooklyn <laughs> that he could count on, Not the him. same guy that I was no all season, right? <laughs> no seconds after the clock of the All Star game. And you show why you're the confident king. It's just, it's just a matter of pain. What the hell was he thinking? It was just, it's just, it, that's one of the situations that pains me the most all the way throughout. Because at the end of the day, guys, I, 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 I know it. He knows it because I said to him, I was ready to play to help a John out. I knew he was ready. Oh, listen, listen, John, 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 John is a fantastic player, man. He came through so many times, putting all these pieces together. He was he was he was like butter man playing the game and and playing with such great intensity, but but in those times he just needed help. Let the man sit down for a minute so he could do that and understand that I'm playing against Houston, a team that I was wearing out on a regular basis. I yes, had high, I had a high scoring average against them dudes, just whooping them oh, down. Son. The important thing about it was that it was it was a situation where you needed a veteran touch at that time. You needed that kind of thing to come through. And somebody who wasn't scared, somebody who knew the situation, somebody who understood where we were and what we had to get accomplished. And just give John a chance to calm down, get a Gatorade so that he could cool out instead of instead instead of, you know, just busting the two for eighteen and we couldn't we couldn't get we couldn't get to where we needed to go. I was I tell you what though, I was uh I had a I had a 35, 40 minute uh shower after that. I just stayed under the shower and let, let the water run over my head and and knew I knew that it was done. That was over. That was it. No more NBA basketball as far as that's concerned, because I, I could not go through the things with New York anymore in that way. 
and I knew that the opportunity was gone and it was finished. We had just lost the championship in, in Houston. And now it was time to, to move on to other things and uh, try to get the opportunities to move forward. But, I, but, I, but all I can say is that Coach Riley has since apologized for that. No problem. But the important thing was I'm telling everybody, I was ready. I was we ready. knew. Listen, let me tell you. We all knew. Great question. Great question, Phil. That's Thank you. That's all. I was ready. So I wasn't like, you're not ready. I'm, I'm, I was ready to play. So that's the main factor. Put yeah, because, 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 because it's, a, it's a big situation, and I was ready for that. That was my situation. I was a go-to guy. I was a last-second shot maker. So the important factor was I was ready to go, ready to help, but I didn't get the call. I was real disappointed and still remain disappointed today, man, yeah. for, the, for the opportunity lost. Listen, my, my artist never says anything. When I brought that question up, you saw the reaction? Yeah, I understand, man. I understand. You know, so we, we got love for you. We always bet on Brooklyn. When it, or New York City, right? We all bet on New York City all the time. Definitely so, man. Being that's, ready that's to play. What it being is. ready to play and ready for the action. When it when it gets rough and tumble, you know the guys from New York are gonna be stepping forward. And that's the that's important right. part of it. You know what I mean? Which is good. But I, but that's that's the main factor. That that's past now. And the important factor is that I hope they can get there one day again, man. And uh and get yeah. that win. <laughs> that's that's never gonna happen. Right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's never gonna happen. He a big fan. I don't really like to make I root for you though. Oh, I hope <laughs> I, it is. I hope my man, believe me. All right. Me. So last couple of questions, right? Who is the best three players you played against in high school? One, college, and the pros. I need one for each one. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, in high school, in, in in high school, it had to be it had to be Al King. It had to be Al. Al 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 was so so fantastic in playing the game, shooting the ball, playing defense, knocking balls down, doing turnaround jumpers, shooting. It was it was he was he was a cut above in high school. He was a cut above everybody else and showed it on a regular basis in that in that way too. So Al was number one in college. In college, it had to. Mm, uh, in college, it had to be. Let me see. Probably, probably a guy like Darnell Valentine, and uh, mm. yeah, the DV was the DV was a bad boy, stealing the ball, shooting the ball, playing for KU, KU at the time. Um, I would have to, I would have to put put it at, at that, or, or or if I go to if I go over to Arizona State at the time that had that had uh, Williams on it, that had Byron Scott on it, it had Kurt mm. Nymphius, Kurt Nymphius on it, it had Sam Williams on it. I mean, that team was, was crazy, Killer. but Byron Scott was on that team also, too, to, to being able to play that game. I think those two players, as far as that's concerned. And the pros, man, the pros, uh, you, you, it's, it's, it's got to be, you've got to be crazy. You've got to be crazy. But number, number one, number one is, number one would have to be, would have to be at the time I'm playing, it would have to be Michael Jordan. It can't be, and it can't be anybody else. But, but, don't, but don't sleep on the great... Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and don't <laughs> fool around when you got a six-nine point guard by the name of Magic Johnson get the rebound and is coming at you full speed, full, j j jerking everybody around, and then all of a sudden he makes a death pass right on the money to a person just to just to lay it up. It, you can't play with that. You can't play with that. That you know you got you got you got you got bad boys in there too, man. You got Larry Bird. You come. come All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gonna talk, bro. We are gonna come back for one more session. I got three more questions to ask, and we are gonna okay. be done. Okay. All right. Got. You. All right. I'm coming right back. Perfect.